Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. In today's video I want to jump back into the whole TIO2 thing and show you how I got these really really good results without spraying anything at all. Just using a paintbrush and this mix that I'll show you the recipe for. Okay let's get right to this. Um, here's the uh, ingredients for this recipe. <clears throat> the first thing you're going to need is an empty jar. Um, if you can get one with a really wide mouth you'd be better off so you can use a larger brush. You're going to need three parts water. I used RO water since I had it on hand. Pour it into your jar. Okay, and the next ingredient you're going to need is good old Elmer's School Glue. It washes off really easy with water, that's why I'm using it. And this is kind of a binder for the TiO2 and it helps also to level it out after you've painted the tile. So you're going to add one part of the glue. Just dump it in there. I know, I'm sorry that you're really only getting a view of the back of my hand right here. So let that drain out, squeeze it out, get as much of it out as you can. And the final ingredient that we're going to use is some TiO2. And you're going to use one part of that. Dump that in there. Now before I mix this up, I suggest that you add some food coloring to this mix. It just helps you um, when you go to paint it on so that you can kind of see and make sure that you're getting a good even coating on the tile. And as far as the actual mixing goes, it's just as simple as put your lid on real good, make sure it's sealed up, and shake it up. And that's all you got to do. And even after you've painted, when you come back a week later, all you have to do again is just shake it up really, really well, and it still works just as good. The application process is really pretty straightforward. Obviously you want to make sure it's uh, mixed up really well. If you can get a wider mouth where you can fit a bigger brush in there, you'd be better off. Um, like I actually have a brush that's as large as this tile that I wanted to use, but I couldn't fit it in the jar. So I went to the next biggest one, which is this two inch wide brush. But you just want to put it on very lightly. You're not trying to really paint it on you're you're putting it on and then you're kind of spreading it across very light touch if you go too hard you'll just be wiping it off it takes a little practice but once you kind of have done it the right way a, a couple times you'll get the feel for it so here's what it looks like after it's had a chance to dry it doesn't take long to dry at all I'd say in room temperature maybe 15 20 minutes but if you want to speed that up, you can put your tile on top of one of those little heat pads. I have one that's used for reptiles, and it worked just fine for that. And it only took a few minutes for my tile to dry. The first thing you're going to want to do before you start any projects is to run a test grid. And as a matter of fact, if you ever have to make a new batch of the TiO2, you're going to want to run a new test grid every time you do that, just because there could be some slight differences and that could change the outcome. On this particular test I decided to go with 45 percent power and 5,000 millimeters a minute speed. Okay now I've got my artwork loaded up here in Lightburn and I'm going to put in the settings I used on this particular project. 
I went, as I said, with 5,000 speed millimeters per minute. I went with 45% power. I always use a 5% overscan, and I chose Jarvis as my dither. And now that we've got all of our settings figured out, here's a little bit of the uh, video of the actual engraving taking place. If this bores you, I understand, go ahead and skip to the end where I'll show you the results. And here's the finished uh, engraving I did of the Halloween Witch, and this is before I've washed off the paint. All right, first of all, just let me <laughs> let me apologize. My sink is dirty, and it's totally my fault because I'm constantly using it for projects like this. My wife hates me for it, but hey, what are you gonna do? Anyway, washing it off is a very simple process just a little bit of warm water run on it and maybe an old toothbrush you don't even really need that um, it comes off super easy And here's what our cat looks like after it's all cleaned off. As you can see, the blacks are nice and dark. Um, the fill is great. There isn't any spots or that salt and pepper effect that you get with the spray version of doing this TiO2. I like this way of doing it a lot better than the spraying. The spraying got everywhere. I mean, it's a, it's, it works and it's fun to do. But this way it's so much cleaner. You can store the solution in a jar and it lasts, as far as I know, for weeks on end because I've, I've had it stored for weeks and come back, shaken it up really good and used it again and gotten the same exact results. Um, it's great every single time just about. However, even though <laughs> it does work almost every single time, there are times where you might get a result similar to this one where it's kind of faded or it has maybe some streaks in it. And I found that that is generally caused by not enough TiO2 in the mix. So maybe incrementally add a little bit until you get the results you're looking for. And then as far as the streaks go, that comes back to the application where you want to be very careful when you're uh, applying it with the brush. Just it, It's a, a really light touch. It's not like the kind of touch you would do if you were actually painting and you're trying to get the paint and smear it on there. That tends to wipe it around and, and leave bare spots where there isn't enough coverage. So that brings me to the end of the video. I hope it was helpful and some of you that are experimenting with this TiO2 stuff will find it helpful. 
So until next time, I hope you all do well and take care.